understand that it was a homeless man. And the funeral director asked him, he said, would you please do this funeral for this man? He doesn't have any family, doesn't have any friends, but would you mind doing the funeral for him? And he said, no, the, the funeral director said, nobody will be there, but would you just at least do a graveside funeral to give him a proper burial? And the pastor said, of course I will. And so the day came and the cemetery was way out in the, in, the, in the woods, way out in the middle of nowhere. And the pastor began to look for this cemetery and he's driving his car and he's on these, all these farm roads and these back roads and he just can't find it. And finally, he, he's, he's, he knows he's got to hurry up and get there. They're going to bury this man. And he sees a man around a hole and he says, well, that, that's got to be the cemetery. So he runs over there and... Uh, he takes his guitar out of his, his car, and he runs over, and he tells the men, he said, listen, I'm the pastor. He says, at the local Pentecostal church, and he said, do you mind if I just sing a song here to give this man a proper burial? And the, the, um, the vault was already in the ground. The, uh, the, apparently, the cask was already in the ground, and, and uh, the foreman said, well, sir, Reverend, you could do whatever you want to do. And, and so the Reverend guts out his, his uh, guitar and begins to sing the song, Amazing Grace. And he's singing Amazing Grace, and he gets to the verse, through many dangers, toils of snares, and he begins to weep. And the men that are around the hole, they're beginning to weep also. They're eating their lunch, and they put down their sandwiches and their, their, their cold drinks, and they're, they're all beginning to sing with them. And then when he gets to that part, when we've been there 10,000 years, the pastor's crying, the foreman is crying, all those men are crying. And the pastor's feeling real good about it, and he puts his guitar up, and he goes back to his car, and while he's going back, the foreman of that operation out there runs behind him with tears in his eyes, and he puts his hand on the shoulder of the minister, and he says, Sir, I just want to tell you something right now. I've been putting in septic tanks now for 25 years, and this is the first time this has ever happened. Well, God can even anoint you. Putting in a septic tank. Can you say praise the Lord? Let's pray. Father, anoint me as I preach the gospel this morning that you, Lord, would be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said amen. Beginning in verse 1 of 1 John chapter 2, I, I love the writing of John. He was the, the disciple that really, truly loved Jesus. He was the one that was at the cross until finally Jesus told him, take my mother home, take mama home. He was there at the, he was there at the, when Jesus arose from the grave, he was the first one into that tomb. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. When you love Jesus, nothing can tear you apart from him. Rules, if you're just serving God on rules, and I'm a holiness preacher, and I know all the rules and all the standards, but if that's all you're serving God about, then you won't make it. But if you love Jesus, you want to praise him. If you love Jesus, you want to live for him. If you love the Lord, you'll want to stand for him. If you love Jesus, you want to pray to him. If you love Jesus, you can't help it but tell everybody how great and how wonderful Jesus is. How many of you know that Jesus is a mighty God today? If you believe, lift up your hand and wave and shout amen. That preacher that stood on the atheist or the bench of the atheists or the Ten Commandments. Doesn't matter, folks. When you've got a zeal, atheists, evolutionists, communists, socialists, nobody can keep you down. Because I love the Lord. How many of you today love the Lord? So John is writing this letter. I'm not going to be reading the whole, the whole chapter, but I'm going to read a few verses here that we'll skip down here in a minute. But Notice what he says at the beginning of verse 1. He said, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. Stop right there. That you don't sin. I know that's kind of hard for some people to imagine, but I truly believe in this, in this life, if you truly love God, we won't be sinning. Really, when you get down to people that are always sinning, it's because they just don't love the Lord. And one thing as a preacher I've learned a long time ago, I cannot make you love God. In fact, I can't even make me love God. I want to love the Lord. 
that you sin not. He goes on to say this. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation or the atonement or the covering or the satisfaction of our sins. And not of our own or ours only, but also the sins for the sins of the whole world. Now, let me say something. When Jesus died upon the cross, I preached this in this church before. I mean, maybe it was two years ago, three years ago, maybe it was last year, I can't remember. But the Bible says that Jesus took the wrath of God upon himself. The wrath that was upon you and I as a sinner, when Jesus died, that wrath, that judgment came upon him. So therefore, when I came to Jesus, the wrath that was upon me because of my sin, my ungodliness, my shame, and my guilt, I come to Jesus and he takes it all away. No longer am I a sinner. I'm a saint by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I still believe in the validity and the effectual power of Christ's blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. As I watched this past week and all of the turmoil in America and all the scandals, and I guarantee you many more will come and people are wanting their rights. And I, I want to stand up and say, wait a minute. Jesus can change your life. Jesus can transform your life. Jesus can deliver your life. Give your life to Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus today. What a name. If you have a character de de defect, come to Jesus. A lady that testified of being delivered to depression is through Jesus. Our brother was sick in your healing your back. Is that correct? Jesus did that. The young lady baptized in the Holy Ghost. Jesus does that. Churches can't do that. Religion cannot do that. But Jesus can do that. And John was the disciple of Jesus that he became an apostle, so he knew Jesus. He goes on to say this in verse 3. And hereby we do know that you, we know him, and we keep his commandments. Wow. He goes on to say this. He who says, I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keeps his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. In other words, I'm not preaching yet. I'm just my introduction. And that is this. Jesus becomes the goal to become like him. I believe if you and I will pray and say, I want to become like Jesus. I want to walk like Jesus. When I was in uh, junior high, our choir in church used to sing this old song, you got to walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, sing like Jesus. Anybody ever heard that old song? It, it kind of goes like this. You got to walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, sing like Jesus, shout like Jesus, go like Jesus, grow like Jesus, go grow like Jesus every day. And when he comes for his own to gather them home, to gather his children safely home, You've got to live like Jesus every day. And, and I've known, noticed something. 
When you begin to sing about Jesus and preach about him and exalt him, he will be in your midst. And you say, brother, I, I'm struggling. I have problems. Tell the Lord that. And say, Jesus, I want to be like you. I'm not like you. But would you help me to be like you, Anne? How many of you believe that when you begin to pray that and say, Lord, I want to be conformed to your image, to your knowledge. I want to walk according to the word of God, the commandments of the Lord. He, the Holy Ghost, will enable you to do that. You know, you don't have to be depressed, be stressed out, be like a roller coaster here at Six Flags. You can actually live an even keel life, a balanced life. How many of you want to do that? Verse 7, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which you had from the beginning. Old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Verse 8, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him, meaning Christ, and in you, because the darkness is past. Do you get that? La tinieblas ya pasó. The darkness, sin, shame, evil in your heart is over. Amen. The, the young men over here in the home, I know you're going through stuff, you're being discipled, you're being trained, but the moment that Jesus Christ came into your heart, you were transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. It's past. That's why Paul said he reckoned himself dead. I no longer live in the past. My God, got to get a witness out here. I don't live there. I don't live where I used to be. I'm moving on. Oh, my Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in this. I'm just starting this message. We're moving, every shot, we're moving on. Mahalia Jackson, the great gospel singer, years ago, wrote a, she wrote a song and she recorded it called, I'm going to move on up a little higher. Anybody ever heard of that old song? Move on up a little, have you ever heard that song before? I heard the Church of God in Christ in Dallas, the mass choir sing that years ago in Dallas, Texas. And my a lady that used to sing with Sister Jackson, she sang that. And by the time they got to that part, I'm going to see old man Daniel. I'm going to I'm going to feast at the feet of Jesus. I mean to tell you, folks, that place erupted in praise and worship. Everyone started shouting and sh dancing and running and carrying on. Even the bishop did. Hallelujah. And when you get a bishop to shout, brother, you know you're having a revival. I'll tell you something right now. God began to move by the, the Holy Ghost and you have to realize uh, that it's over. Everybody say it's over. No, let me read that in the Amplify. Yet I am writing you a new commandment, which is true, is realized in him and you, and because the darkness, moral blindness is clearing away, and the true light, the revelation of God in Christ is already shining. I'm no longer living where I was. I'm on my way. Everybody shout, I'm on my way. I may be in the wilderness, but thank God I'm not in Egypt. Y'all didn't get it. I may be in the wilderness, but thank the Lord, I'm not in Egypt. Isaiah, thank God I'm not in Espanola. I'm not where I used to be. I'm on my way. Can I get a witness right now? The Lord has brought me out. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. If you are today, shout praise the Lord. Stop looking at the darkness. Stop looking at the past. Stop looking at where you used to be and say, thank God where I'm at and keep your eyes upon that heavenly city because that's where I'm fixing to go. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. Hmm. Everybody go, hmm. Verse 9, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. 
issues. Hates his brother. I think that's he who loves his brother abides in the light. And there is not an occasion of stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness. And knows not where he goes because the darkness has blinded his eyes. You see, that's, this is the problem with America, is the hatred that people have for one another. You, 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 you shot my brother, I'm going to shoot yours. You hit me, I'm going to hit you. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. I may not like everything that people do, but I'm going to tell you something, I've got to love them in Jesus' name. And if I'm in the love of God supernaturally, I can love other people. It's not just, oh, I'm going to try to make it happen. Brother, it just begins to happen. How many of you here have ever been offended? How many of you have ever been hurt? Has anybody ever hurt your family? Has anybody ever gone through some stuff that you just want to get back? Well, brother, when it says brother, it's dealing mainly with the household of faith. And I, I've seen some churches split and hatred in some churches. I knew of one Pentecostal church where they had a big church split. And, they, and you would know the pastor, Brother, uh, Brother Ray, if I mentioned his name, when the church split, they remember how they used to donate the church? Families would donate pews, and they'd put the little uh, name tag of the, of the founder that donated the pew on the pew. Well, the people were so ticked off, they began to take the name tag off the pew they had donated. They couldn't take the pew, so they went ahead and just took the name tag off, uh, and they went somewhere else. Uh, well, brother, I want you to know that's pretty hate. That's hatred. Uh, and God cannot bless you if you hate somebody. You're going to have to learn to forgive people and say, Lord, I know they've done me wrong. Uh, I, I know I, they, they've been wrong, uh, but I'm going to lay it here the cross, and I'm going to let you take care of it. How many of you know that God can take care of people a whole lot better than I can take care of them? If you believe it, lift up your hand and say amen tonight. I, I, I don't want to be in darkness. I want to be in light. Glory to God. Verse 12, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven, and you're Excuse me, your name, your, your, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. They've done it already. I write unto you, home, men's home, ladies' home. New hope. You have overcome the wicked one. Amen. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. The term little children implies someone in training. We start out as killed children. Then we begin to move up to youth in Christ. And then we become mature. None of this is my message, and I'm just. How many of you want to mature in the Lord? Amen. Don Brankel, one of our great evangelists, he's 80. He's still preaching revivals. He has been by a lot more than 30 years. And he said this. He said, I don't mind feeding babes the word, the milk of the word, but I despise it when I have to part the whiskers to put the bottle in. Pastor Ray, have you ever had to do that? Not here, of course, but the other churches you've been at where you, some people just never grow up in the Lord. They're always whining. Sister so-and-so didn't shake my hand. Brother so-and-so didn't shake my hand. I'm not coming back to church anymore. They just, they don't love, there's no love in that church. There's just no love in that church. I've been giving a dollar a week for the past 50 years, and there's just no, and I don't know why God is a blessing my life. They just never grow up. Everybody say, move on. Move on. Say it again, move on. Grow up. I got to get to my message. Verse 14. 
I've written unto you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written unto you, because, young men, because you are strong in the word of God, abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world. This is what I want to start preaching. Love not the world. Love not the world. Now, I know when, when the Lord was giving this commandment, he was dealing with the world system, but I want to just talk about some of the New Agers. I, I thought the term tree hugger was a, see, in Texas, I don't know anybody that hugs trees. So, so I thought that tree huggers were kind of people that were just a, a, a term for people that wanted to save the planet. Then I find out there's people that actually hug a tree. <laughs> You're not tearing down. Well, they don't say that up here. They don't, say, they don't talk about that up here. You're not tearing down. This pine tree. I'm going to live in it, and you're going to make the highway go around it. Now, <laughs> I believe in being kind to the planet. I go to every, every hotel I go to now, they won't change your sheets for three days because you're saving the water and soap suds. And I'm not, that's fine. I mean, uh, I can handle that. But this world is not your salvation. And, and, and a tadpole in the Platte River won't deliver you. And are y'all with me, saints? But what, what, the, what the Holy Spirit is speaking about, love not the world, is not dealing with the planet. It's the system. Love not the world or cherish the world for the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, now that word, the word love in the Greek is agape. Because I looked it up and said, well, I wonder what he meant by, well, agape is the highest form of love towards God. Right. And basically, if you are in love with the world, world more than God, we don't have the love of God. How many of you have ever met anybody, forget about them, let's talk about you, us and how many of you, before you got saved, loved this world? How much are cigarettes now a pack? How much? Almost six bucks. How many smoked at least a pack? How many did you smoke, honey, before you got saved? A day? A pack a day? A pack a week? A pack every other day? What did you smoke? Pack a day. Six times seven. What is that? $42 times four. A hundred what? $168 a month. To smell. Now, now like, one, like one preacher said, cigarettes may not send you to hell, but you just smell like you went there. <laughs> now, I, don't, I, I don't smoke. I, I don't, you shouldn't be smoking. I think I will, but anyway, that's what he said. But then, then now, are y'all are still with me? Now, this is not you in, in New Hope. Please understand that. This is those folks in Dallas, Texas. But I've seen people give up their cigarettes delivered and give a dollar in the offering. 
I just can't afford it. Aren't you glad it's not like that up here? We're perfect up here. Everybody say, I'm perfect. Well, I said it, but I was trying to get you to say it. Because I don't want to be judged by God. Love not the world. You go to the next verse so I can preach. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, craving of, for sensual gratification, and the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, and the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world. Next verse. And the world passes away and disappears, and with it the forbidding cravings, the passionate desires, the lust of it. But he who does the will of God and carries out his purpose in his life abides or remains forever. Amen. Go back to the next verse if you would up there. Verse, thank you. All. If you want to know the problem of the world, this is it. The Bible will answer your question. Why do people do what they do? Why are they doing what they're doing in Washington? Why is the city government, why does my, my family do what they do? It's found right here. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. The fleshly lust. How many of you have some flesh on you right now? How many of you have more than you want? How many want to lose some of that flesh? Well, he's not talking about this. He's talking about something on the inside of it. Glory. What is the lust of the flesh? The craving for sensual, sensual gratification. Sensual. To gratify the flesh. A guy I went to college with said this. I told you this the past week. He said, love can wait five years. Lust cannot wait five minutes. And it could be the lust for sex, the lust for money. And I think this is one we don't deal with too often, and that is the lust for power. Oh. There's an old expression in the South that says this. Power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. Absolutely. Have you ever met anybody from Texas that was a nobody? I mean, you know, they were, they were just so humble. They, they just were so humble. They, they just walked around like this. Nobody loves me. And then the Lord saves them. Praise God. And then they come to church. And the pastor says, you know what? I think you could be used in this certain ministry. Oh. God has called me. And then they do well in that ministry, and then they, they, they get promoted to another one. And then they start lording over the people. Anybody ever met anybody like that before? They start lower, lording over them. I'm in control here. Bless your little pea-picking heart. I'm, I'm, I'm the pastor. 
or the evangelist or the bishop or whoever it was, the superintendent, the, the presbyter, he has given me authority. The Bible says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. And the same God that put you there can take you out. I remember of King Herod in the Bible who he went to the Colosseum in Jerusalem and they thought he was some God and he, they, they let him praise him. And the Bible says the Lord spit him and it was eaten up by the worms. The lust for power. This is my corner. Don't you dare come to my corner. It's mine. People fight over street corners. Has anybody ever met anybody like that? Anybody in here like that? These are bright lights, so I really can't see your faces, so you're safe. It's going to pass away. Ya va acabar, ya va terminar. It's going to pass away. The lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind. Greed. Any of you ever met anybody that's greedy? Anybody like that before you got saved? It's just not rich people that are greedy, folks. I met some real poor folks that are greedy. I met people that worked minimum wage. Greedy. The lust of the eyes. I got to have that $150,000 Lamborghini. I got to have it. I got to have it. I've got to have it. I've got to have it. But you're only making $1,000 a month. I've got to have it. And it can consume a person. Greed consumes people. Because it's never going to be enough. Once you get the Lamborghini, then you want a Porsche. And after you get the Porsche, you want what? A Ferrari. And after you get that, you want something else. And then more. Thank you. Awesome. More and more and more, and more, and more, and more. Remember Amelia Marcos? She was the president's wife of the Philippines. How many pairs of shoes did she have? How many? Thousands. What was it? 16? 16,000 pairs of shoes. 16,000 pairs of shoes. Can I get a witness, ladies, out here? What, what would you do, ladies, with 16,000 pairs of shoes? Sister Marlene says, I'd wear them, all of them. I'd wear them five minutes every day to make sure I get my foot into them. Hallelujah. I'll let people know, I've got me some shoes, and they're from Payless. Can I get a witness out here tonight? Greed. Greed. Anybody ever been plagued by that? And it's just not, it's just not the world. Sister, it's saints. Now, I'm not against something that you can afford. I don't think the Bible is even against having things. It's when it possesses you. I've never cast the devil out called the devil of greed, but I'm sure there's one out there somewhere. Greed. It will destroy you. Then there's another one. The pride of life. Assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world. All of this does not come from God. Pride. The Bible says God hates a prideful look. The Bible says he resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. 
The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. How many of you have ever struggled with pride? How many struggled this morning? This is a good pride. I believe in taking a bath, taking a shower. I'm not against you buying your cologne, looking nice, having nice clothes. Understand that. I'm not against that. But I just want you to know something. Just because we've got some nice things doesn't make me better than anybody. In, in, there, there's a, I don't want to mention them, but I, I won't mention them by name, but I know some Christian people in the South, they're real big down there. They're not a part, they're not us, but they're another Pentecostal group. And they're very, when they walk in the mall, this is how they walk. Anybody ever met anybody like that? That's not the Holy Ghost. That's not the Spirit of the Lord. It doesn't cost, it, it doesn't cost anybody to smile at somebody. It doesn't cost me anything to shake their hand. It doesn't cost me anything to say, you know, brother, I'm, I'm praying for you. It's not going to kill you. You won't get contaminated. You won't die if you smile at somebody and just say, you know what, something? The Lord loves you. I was in Dallas several years ago, and I was at the, up, I think, visiting somebody in the, in the Methodist hospital. And we went into a Mexican restaurant, me and a friend of mine called El Phoenix, and there was a, a lady over there sitting by herself at lunch, didn't know who she was. And I just felt this compassion to say, just to tell her that Jesus loves you. And I told my friend, I said, I've never done this before, but I said, I just feel the compassion to tell this lady that Jesus loves her. And she said, well, go tell her that. So I went over there and I said, ma'am, I know you don't know me, but I just want you to know Jesus told me to tell you he loves you. And she got this big smile on her face. And she says, thank you so much. And brother, it's time for us to make somebody else's day instead of we them making my day. And how many of y'all believe that today? Let me say that one more time. We want everybody to make my day. We want everybody to meet my needs. Why don't we start letting God use us to bless somebody else and say, you know what? I may not like the way they look, the way they smell, the way they talk, but I can still show them the love of Almighty God. Can I get a witness out here today? If you believe it, shout amen. Glory to God. When they go out and wash the feet, the feet of these people down here on the streets. And in, in, in the natural, it's like, man, why would you do that? Ingrown toenails? Dirty feet? Homeless? I mean, we're talking about homeless folks. We're not talking about us. Yes, too, Yes. We're talking about people that have issues. If I asked Brother Robert, I said, how to go he powerful? Between the two churches, the different churches down there, they washed 100 feet, gave out shoes and socks. You say, well, what does it matter? Is that going to change them? You don't know if the God's going to, you don't know. Why, why do we, can, can I just preach this morning? Pride always is, and let me tell you something, folks. It's in preachers. I, who am I to determine what God can do in a person's life? Who am I to determine if they're redeemable or not? I look at the church out here. I can't determine if you're redeemable or not. I believe you are. If by the virtue that you're here, God still is reaching out to us. And you know I'm a hard preacher. I, I can preach sin. 
I, I can get down there, but I can get right down to man. I can really, I don't preach like I used to over here, but I'm going to tell brother one. You remember brother Ray when I when I first started preaching, brother Ray, twenty something years ago. I I in this church, brother, I blew it freaked me out. Well, I was raised in a church, no makeup, no pants. You don't cut your hair. You don't have a beard. You can have a mustache if you're tweaking it just a little bit. That was about it. No movies, no dances, no roller skating, no ball games, no, all of that. And I come in here, Brother Ray asked me to preach. And when I was doing the youth camp over there, Cedar Ridge, Colorado, and the worship band came here. Well, they, 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 they look Pentecostal because that's what, that's what they made them look like in that, over there. So Brother Ray said to me, I didn't know who he was. Brother Rigo told me about Brother Ray, that he just preached to Brother Ray in the old church, not the, the little church he showed me yesterday. And he was just moving into the storefront down here on Tennyson, in, uh, Ford and Tennyson. And um, Brother Ray met me in the cafeteria. I will never forget this. And Brother Ray says to me, I want you to preach in my church. And as I'm on my way to Cheyenne to preach for Clovis up there, and they go back, preach over here for Spanish assembly, and, and then somebody else said, hey, he wants to preach in his church. Who's his pastor? And when I first came to the church, the ushers were in shorts. Brother, our church had a bylaw. You don't come on the church in pants or shorts. I mean, they're just, they're, there was a bylaw. But you see, through that, God began to show me that he's not after my clothes. He's after my heart. And yes, I, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I believe in dressing right. But him and I, brother, brother what, what good is it to have a church of a bunch of prideful people walking around, prideful, won't talk to anybody, won't love anybody, won't reach out to anybody. They're not good for anything. Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth, and if the salt has lost its savor, it is good for nothing and trampled under foot of men. Are y'all with me? That's why a lot of our churches of just dying out here is because they're good for nothing. How many of you know we've got to have the love of Almighty God? If you believe the shout, amen. I, I was at, there's a little church. I'm almost done. You're still with me? You're not bored? A little church, a little Assembly God church, they're just struggling. And so, a man in the church, the pastors are very elderly. So, they, very, so an, an older man, but he's younger than the pastors. Feel, feels the Holy Spirit to knock on doors every other Saturday. So people are starting to come in. Another man in the church told me, God has just not called me to do that. I said, well, apparently you're reading another Bible. First of all, it's not a call, it's a commission. You don't have to feel called to witness. Amen. What he's saying is, I ain't going. Brother Ray, have you ever met anybody that tells you stuff like that? God has not called me. They want to make us spiritual. It's a spiritual thing, you know. God has not called me to, to do that. That's your calling. And I want to say, well, what is yours? It's like, Beric, in the 1980s, they called it the, uh, the, I'm not called 
to intercessory prayer. I see nowhere in the Bible where there's a special calling to pray. I just love TV. I can't pray. I'm almost done. I love Duck Dynasty. Me and Brother Ray, last seven months ago, I was just preaching up here. We sat down late and watched Cajun Justice. <laughs> Brother, how many alligators do you want to see wrestled in your life? I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like that's all they're showing now is people in Louisiana living in the swamps wrestling alligators. It's like I've seen it once. I've seen it twice. Three times is enough for me. I don't need to see another program on wrestling alligators, but I do want to seek the face of God. The le 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 leave the alligators alone. Everybody say, leave the alligators alone. Say it one more time. Leave the alligators alone. Leave the world alone. Say, ah, all of this is going to pass away. Next verse again. Let me read it real fast. And the world passeth away, disappears, and with it the forbidden cravings, the passionate desires, the lust of it. But he who does the will of God and carries out his purposes in his life abides, remains forever. I want you to know, brother, I don't want something that's going to pass away. I want that which is eternal. Can I get a witness right? I said, can I get a witness right now? It's all going to be burnt up in fire one day. Grandma's rocking chair. Bless God. Grandma died, and I got the rocking chair because she rocked me to sleep in that rocking chair. <laughs> and that's Grandma Shaw right over there. I go to my grandmother's house. She's still living. She has furniture from her grandparents and great grandparents. I feel like I'm in a museum. She said, your, your great-great-grandpa, he made that chair right there. Don't sit in it, son. Don't sit in that chair. <laughs> well, when did he, when did he live? <laughs> Don't you sass me, boy. He died, he, he died back in 1930. The chair's there. I'm serious. I go in there. I'm, like, I'm just like, I, you can't, have you been to a person's house you can't sit in? Don't sit there. Don't sit on that. My mother tells, tells me that, Chris, honey, honey, come over here now. I'm like, I'm 55 years old. <laughs> come here, come here, honey. You sit right there. <laughs> you know, that was grandma's chair right there. <laughs> My goodness, brother, let me just go sit outside on the pad. No, you can't sit on that because that. <laughs> it's all going to pass away. One day when Jesus comes back to this earth at the end of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, he's going to burn this place up. And, brother, I want you to know that that old, that your boys, brother Chuck, will be able to put that fire out because when those rockies start burning, it's going to lap up all the water in this Platte River, every stream, every ocean. And one day Jesus is coming back and making a new heaven and a new earth can i get a witness be look for eternity <laughs> glory i say glory to god y'all to him i say glory to god whether you like it or not i'm going to be with you forever
Now, there ain't going to be a room. I'm fixing to close. Sister Becky, you better hurry up and come to the keyboard and play something spiritual. <laughs> There's not going to be the assemblies of God. Heaven. You've heard of us, haven't you, sister? The assemblies of God. And if you say it right, it's the assemblies of God. <laughs> Have you heard of the Church of God in Christ? You, you know that you know there's you know the theme song of the Church of God in Christ. This is the Church of God in Christ. This is the Church of God in Christ. We are anointed by God appointed. This is the church of God in Christ. So there won't be a church of God in Christ's place, an assembly of God, and a church of God, and four squares, and the concilio, and the locales. And we're all going to get up there and not know each other. But we'll hear somebody's music over there, the church of God in Christ. I wonder who they are. They'll have a dot, sort, sign the door. Church of God in Christ. Heaven. Assembly of God down that door, that corridor right there. You can, if you're assembly of God, that's where you go. It won't be like that, folks. It'll be one church, one faith, one baptism, and one blood. If you love the Lord, you'll serve him. If you don't, you won't. Hi, Brother Ray, I am having a hard time. <laughs> the, old grand, the old group, they just uh, keep calling me on the phone. <laughs> they keep going, calling me to their little party out there in the park. And brother, I fell. Brother Ray, I fell. Have you ever considered changing your phone number? I don't think it's that expensive. How much is it? Free. Oh. Well, we should like that. It's free. Oh, 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 I can't, I can't do that because, uh, you don't understand, Brother Ray, I, I have a drinking problem, and every time I go down Colfax by that liquor store, something just pulls me in. It's like this claw, it just gets a hold of me, I can't stop it. Well, aren't there other roads besides Colfax to drive down? Aren't there? Surely in Denver there's more than one road besides Colfax. Well, brother, brother Ray, you don't understand. Huh? Mm. Oh, hmm. You got me on that one. <laughs> Change my number and don't go down Colfax. <laughs> i got to come up with another reason. The bottom line is, do you love the Lord? Yes. I, I, and you know, really, really what some of you need to do, and I'm going to tell you this. And I'm just going to be old, old holiness school here for a minute. Some of you need to get rid of your cotton pick and pride and start shouting. Well, when I, when I was a kid, these evangelists would come. You brother see him, Brother Ray, and I know Brother Eddie has. We'd have, when I was a kid, the, the evangelists that came to our church when I was a teenager, they're dead. But they told people to do things. Somebody would, I remember a lady came up to this one evangelist. She had problems in her feet. This evangelist came up. To, I don't even know who the guy was. She came up to him and said, I have feet problem. He said, run up and down this aisle three times and I will heal you. Remember when they used to do stuff like that? She took off running and the Lord healed her. 
See, see, some people are so full of themselves. And I, I know, I know it's not all in the shout. I've heard that all my life. But it sure ain't in just sitting there like a bullfrog on a lily pad going ribbit. Some, there's some folks that sit like this in church. What some of you need to do is get out in an aisle. Take your shoes off and cut a rug and say, I am going to praise the Lord. I'm going to crucify this flesh. Can I get a witness? You, you say, well, it ain't my personality. Forget about you. Let's talk about the Lord. Let's talk about what he enjoys, uh, what he wants. Uh, the word of the Lord says in Psalms 150 to praise him on the drums, praise him on the cymbals, praise him on the organs, uh, praise him on your whatever you've got to praise him and to praise him in the dance. Uh, can I get a witness right now? You, you see, brother, we, our churches have become so into ourselves. Uh, you need to start shaking your leg. Uh, hallelujah. Buck a little bit. Uh, jerking a little bit again and saying, I don't care who sees me. I'm going to praise the Lord. Can I get a witness out here? To <laughs> you're with me if you're shouting me today. And, and, I, and I, see, our problem is we were raising this thing and so we know what all the people say. It's not how high you jump. It's how straight you walk after you come down. <laughs> you ever heard anybody say that? Oh, yeah. It's not all in this shout. It ain't my, I've seen people shout, and then they go out and do so. What does that have to do with you? <laughs> now, if you can't, I know Chuck can't shout because he had a hip replacement. But I believe, Brother Chuck, once that's healed, you better get out there with me, brother. We're going to shout a little bit on the when you're out of that stuff, because I've seen that man shout years ago, and I'm not ashamed of it. I said, I'm not ashamed of running. I'm not ashamed of dancing. I'm not ashamed of lifting up my hands. Brother, I I'm too old now to go back to something I never was. I never was, let me say that again. I never was raised in a dead church. I was raised in some little starchy church over here like, we can't do that over in this church. But we're holiness people. Yeah, but we don't do that anymore. We've arrived. We've gone beyond that stuff. Uh, that's why a lot of our Pentecostal churches no longer have a Sunday night service. It's because it's become as exciting as a newcomer mortuary right beside you. We're not a mortuary. That's a mortuary. We are the house of the living God. Can I get a witness out here? If you believe in this, shout it. If you want to see someone shout, meet my mother. You ought to see my grandmother. She's 93. She looks like she's doing the jitterbug. I don't know why the Lord's leading me in this direction, but I think some of us are just too full of us. It's all about my flesh, my flesh, pampering my, myself, me, 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 you, me and me, me and me, me, everybody say me and me, me and me. I'm so important. People look up to me. People watch me. I can't do that. I have a reputation. Mm. Can I get a witness out here tonight? 
If I'm embarrassed, brother, I don't mean to embarrass you. Hallelujah. But I'm just telling what the whole Lord just given to me. Uh, it's, uh, people look at me. They, they, they're going to think I'm like them. If, they, if I do that, uh, they might think I'm like the home over here, you know, jumping over there. They may think I'm one of them. Well, brother, why don't you become one of them? What would happen if the whole church became one of them? You say, well, I, I, I can't do that because I'm sick. That's okay. Well, can't you do this with your arm? Well, not with that one. What about the other one? Well, I can't do that either. What about this? Can you do something to praise the Lord? Amen. Can you do something to glorify the name of the Lord? When I get to heaven... I don't think it's going to be quiet. Well, it does say it for one half hour. That's it. And you better, if that's the kind of church you like, you better hope you're there for that half hour. <laughs> Have you ever met people like that? I, they say, I, I, I just like it quiet. I just let the spirit flow through me. Let's just sing Kumbaya. Let's just sway a little bit. We are one in the spirit. We are one. Remember that song? I'm not that. God has done too much for me. I say, God has done too much for me. I've come to, Brother Ray, myself, others have come through much hell and high water to give this up. I, I hope I am die preaching. I, I hope I die shouting. You, you, people say, you're just too loud. You shouldn't sweat. You shouldn't spit when you preach that. You should just conversate up there in the, in the pulpit. Well, that's good for them if that's what they want, but that's not what I want. I like this. Uh, I, I like this kind of a church. Uh, I like noise in the house of the Lord. Uh, I like it when people can shout. How many of you tonight, this morning, believe that God is the mighty God? Y'all come up here. I want you to sing that song. I want to praise him a little, whatever that song. I want to shout a little bit more than I did before. I want to sing a little bit more than I did before. Freedom. And I don't want, if you can't shout, I don't want you looking at us like we're a bunch of idiots. At least pretend for my sake that you're enjoying it. Can I get a witness out here tonight? I want you to begin, as they begin to sing this song, if you're delivered by the power of the blood, I want us to sing this song like you believe it. Yes. That means you and 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 y'all. Everybody in hell, everybody shout, that's me. Stop using your past. Stop using your wife. Stop using your kids. Stop using whatever as an excuse not to worship the Lord. I'm not of this world. I'm in it, but not of it. I'm on my way to the greatest camp meeting in the sky. If you believe a shout, amen today. I said, Sister Lord, you talk about a trauma camp meeting. Wait till the one I get to in heaven. You talk about shouting. You talk about singing. You talk about rejoicing. You talk about dancing. Brother, I'm going to be on the front row. I'm not in this world. I hate to see what was happening in America, but I'm still on my way to heaven. Yes. Didn't change a thing for me. Oh, my Lord, can I get a witness out here? Y'all ready? Come on, y'all, come up here. Hallelujah. 
We're fixing to make an altar call in just a minute, but we got to do this before we do any praying. We're going to worship the Lord. I can't sing like they can, so they're going to have to lead it. Hallelujah. If you want to praise the Lord, get out here right now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Shut up, little cut. You say, I'm a, I'm a visitor. That's okay. You're never a visitor in your father's house. You ready? Go for it. <laughs> 